I get to share my time with the very interesting and talented creators of popular children's book series, The 13th Story Treehouse. Author Andy Griffiths and illustrator Terry Denton, they were here on a book tour for their eighth book in the series, which is this one, The 104 Story Treehouse. Terry Denton, illustrator, Andy Griffiths, the writer. How did you two meet? How did you start working together? So I was a very bad influence on Terry because he was doing lovely watercolour pictures and um, very nice stuff. Yeah, and I still do. Awards. I still do those watercolours. <laughs> and I was, I was just like, books don't have to be boring. They don't have to have a message. They can be as wonderfully energetic and crazy as a Warner Brothers cartoon. And when I found, saw what Terry could do, and I can, I continue to amaze, be amazed by what Terry can do. It's part, part of my delight in these books is setting him ever increasingly impossible challenges. Annoying challenges. To draw. <laughs> and, and yet he does it. Like and the, mastering it. The latest book, he's got a never-ending staircase that goes on for 27 pages. 27 pages of a never-ending staircase. Mm -hmm. So for those of us... It's just his way of filling up 27 pages. <laughs> Making the books <laughs> get, get thicker and thicker. <laughs> so for those who aren't familiar or who maybe don't have a child in their house who become really obsessed with these books, what are the, what's the Treehouse Stories all about? Well, it's about Terry and I living in a never-expanding fantasy treehouse full of bowling alleys and shark tanks and never-ending staircases. And our job is to write the book, but we can't write the book because there's so much distraction. Mostly Terry is, is getting distracted and having accidents. And we're trying to fix this. Our neighbour Jill is a, is a major character who helps us with all our animal-based problems. And, uh, and somehow we, we solve all our problems and then we write the book right at the end about all the problems we just solved while we were trying to write the book. So you add 13 stories every time to the treehouse. Now, it does star, as you say, Andy and Terry are the stars. So they are loosely or entirely based on you two? Well, it depends who you talk to. <laughs> and Jill, of course, because Jill is your yeah. wife. And editor. And editor. And co-writer, yeah. I think loosely, but um, I think Andy might think more that they're uh, a bit tighter than that. Oh, no, no, they're, they're loose. <laughs> they're, they're highly exaggerated forms of, of general tendencies. They're usually amalgams of, of people that we know. So, yeah, we, we're fairly... Um, we have a, a very bad-tempered publisher, uh, Mr Big Nose, who's, who's, who's angry and shouting and his nose explodes if he doesn't get his book on time. But our, in real life, our publisher is, is a, a lovely woman called Claire, a New Zealander, and uh, she has a very small nose. And it doesn't explode. And it doesn't explode. Yeah. Well, that is really good to know. So, but we need a big bad wolf in each book, and he's, he's the big bad wolf throughout this series. How do you keep it interesting and come up with the ideas? I think a lot of it is, is if, we're, if we're enjoying it, the 10-year-old uh, child that we've managed to, uh, to find in our own brains if, if that child is amused and if we're amused, therefore it's going to work, I think, generally. Yeah, but it begins with lists, just making lists of ridiculous levels. And, and my aim for those is to make both Terry and Jill laugh when they hear the level. So to get 13 usable ones, you actually need to make a list of about 150 because not everything you think up is great. But if you do it in great quantity, every now and again you get a an odd thing, or Terry sends me a drawing and I go, that could be a level, so. But even things that aren't the levels, like you've got the glass piano full of goldfish uh, that's, that they can buy, um, or a burps, you save your burps in a burp yeah. bank, just the concepts. I mean, it's... <laughs> Pretty it, amazing, eh? They are really amazing. <laughs> and, then, and as soon as you read you go, a burp bank's a really good idea, and to a 10-year-old child, that's just going to be the best thing in the world. Yeah, it's, yeah. and you know, kids have a lot of burps. So, and they find burps funny. So I know if we, um, we combine it with something as important as a bank, you know, often it's the incongruity that makes the things funny. Do you think you're just big kids at heart? Is that why these books are so successful? I think finding that big kid mm -hmm. inside is, is the key to it, yeah. I, th I think everyone's got that big kid, but they lose contact sometimes, whereas ours never went away. It was, it's... And it's good to find that child in yourself for any number totally. of reasons. Yeah. And one thing I'm really proud about with the books is the parents are really enjoying reading them with the kids. They're, they're getting 
reminded of, of their childhood. And, do, you um, actually, do you actually test it out on any children before you actually get to the final product? We used to. Mm. We used to do formal. Well, I'd send it to a few kids. But these days we can kind of guess. And part of the joy of the tours that we do is we get very close contact with the kids and yeah. we know what's making them laugh and what's, what's going what's likely to make them laugh. They once suggested an exploding eyeball level. And I said, why would you want to go into a level where your eyeballs explode? And the, the kids said, because it's cool. <laughs> and, and you can't argue with that, can you? No. So I said, all right, you can have your eye exploding <laughs> eyeballs. And Terry thoughtfully drew a little box saying spare eyeballs so <laughs> you, you can uh, replace them over and over again. In this, <laughs> in this day and age, getting kids into books can be difficult because not only are you fighting against other books, but then all keeping them off all their other media devices. How important do you think it is that we keep children reading? It's vitally important because you need reading. Literacy affects all of your life outcomes, your ability to um, get jobs, to read labels on medicine, to find out information of any type. So for me, it's, it's the underlying serious thing of what we do. Mm. Is, is and and humour's our way into kids and that, that seems to be a very strong, you know, very powerful way in. Every kid loves to laugh. Absolutely. And every kid, as you say, loves a burp joke or a fart yeah. joke. Well, thank you both so much for having a chat with us today. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, nice interview, Mel. And they did a picture, so can I see yeah. it? Yeah, do you want to see it? Yeah, please. Ta-da! Oh, that is awesome. And I think you'll find the likenesses uncanny. I particularly yes. like the burp that Andy Griffiths insisted Terry Denton draw in <laughs> and the little penguin who was gasping from the burp. Nice. And what's the bird up the top? Is oh, that, that just me annoying you? Yeah, picking away and drawing blood. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. So great to meet the guys. Um, they did a bit of a tour around the country promoting their new book, so some of you would have been lucky enough to have seen them in person. And, of course, the 104-story 104 tr 104 treehouse. It's available now from all great bookshops. <laughs> <laughs>